This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. The X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All hit radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome to the Exxon, everyone. I am Rob McConnell, and for the next uh, three hours, no, today is Saturday, for the next four hours, I'm going to be your host and your guide as together we cross the X-Zone galaxy out there to a place where we investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology. If you'd like to send me an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com on all social media sites, TV. Our radio website, www.xzoneradiotv.com. And if you'd like to find out all the programming, including the no, new programming that we have available for you 24 7, 365 on the Exxon Broadcast Network, just go and check it out at www.xzbn.net. My guest this hour, Exxon Nation, is a gentleman I had on the show nearly 21 years ago. My gosh. Albert Taylor is his name. And he is a number one Los Angeles Times best-selling author and former aeronautical engineer, scientist on the International Space Station. Dr. Taylor spent two and a half decades evaluating systems designs on a wide variety of top-secret government programs, such as the F-117A stealth fighter and the Strategic Defense Initiative Anti-Ballistic Missile Program, a.k.a. Star Wars. Dr. Taylor was born and raised in Southern California and is currently a paranormal researcher, international lecturer and speaker working on his latest book, Journey of the Cosmic Soul, a detailed scientific and spiritual study resulting from over 22 years of -of out-of-the-body, paranormal, and astrophysical research. Beyond that, he is a robotics expert and has been designing and building building, um, fully and semi-autonomous robotic probes to support his ongoing research of various types of paranormal phenomenon. His website, www.alberttaylor.com. And Albert, welcome back to the X Zone after all these years. Thank you very much. It's a, uh, a pleasure to, to be back. And um, I was thinking, uh, yeah, I, who, who knew all these years later I'd yeah. still be able to go to McDonald's and buy a, a Happy Meal and survive. So that's, <laughs> I'm, doing, I'm doing okay. Uh, I, to, okay. to be honest with you, I don't know how anybody can survive eating at McDonald's. <laughs> but we did find one thing out th- this past week, didn't we, Albert? That if you're a criminal and if you're wanted, the last place you want to go and get something to eat is McDonald's because they will... That was amazing. Uh, I I don't, I can't relate, which is a good thing, but that whole story was beyond belief. So, Albert, how have you been? Uh, I know you're as busy as ever. Um, the first time you and I talked, I believe we talked about your book, Soul Traveler. And mm-hmm. over the years, I have seen such an awakening, such an awareness with people. They're, 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 they're turning their heads to traditional science, traditional religion, traditional medicine, and yeah. saying, you know what? Yeah. We know there's more out there, and we demand the truth. 
Well, what, what I think uh, I've noticed anyway in my um, travels around the world is that people are no longer um, satisfied with living mm-hmm. their lives based on faith. They are having personal experiences, yeah. and the personal experiences don't necessarily match up with what they've been taught through schooling, uh, religions, and things like that. And the personal experiences, you know, uh, it's like it's a difference between being told something and knowing something because you've experienced it. And the knowing is a very powerful thing, and I think that's what's happening globally. Information is power. There's no two ways about that. One of the most astonishing facts that I have just recently learned is that paganism is making a resurgence that has never been seen before. And a lot of the people who are turning to paganism are saying, well, you know what? We're not sheep anymore. We don't want to have a shepherd. We want to lead. We want to know the truth. We want to be part of the solution of all the mess that this planet is in. And there's only one way that you can do that is, number one, taking control. Number two, admitting that, you know, you're part of the solution instead of the problem. And number three, finding yourself a religious uh, philosophy or a uh, humanistic philosophy that coincides with what your beliefs are. And a lot of people are turning to paganism because paganism is a Mother Earth or Earth-based philosophy. Right, right. I think what um, me with me personally is I'm looking for consistency. Yeah. Um, I figure if it's truth, it's it's going to always be truth, and it's always going to be same. That, the same. That's how, how facts are. All right, my friend. And, I hate to do this, know, but I've got to I've got to take a commercial break. Please stand by. Okay. Albert uh, Taylor is our very special guest, a hardworking, dedicated professional, an author, and a good friend. We'll be back on the other side of this break. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone radio show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. I am Dr. Carl O'Helvey, founder, president of a new cancer foundation focusing on evidence-based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, meditation, affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. Hello, I'm Pete Marsh. With my daughter Justina, we will be presenting the new radio show, Too Good to Be True. If something seems too good to be true, it usually is. But with the help of Justina's amazing gifts, we're going to gain insight into questions that don't yet have complete answers. Have you wondered who built Stonehenge and for what reason? 
wire crop circles found in the same region as Stonehenge and elsewhere? Are crop circles a hoax or are they created with technologies that we have little knowledge of? Who built the pyramids in Egypt and also in other countries? How and why were they built? Was the Titanic switched with the Britannic as part of a gigantic insurance fraud or for more insidious reasons? What caused the Tunguska event when trees were flattened over an 800 square mile area in Siberia? Will the new insights be too good to be true? Well, that will depend on what you are prepared to believe. Please join us as we start on this journey together. For more information on Too Good To Be True, visit www.xzbn.net. Little children aren't the only ones afraid of the dark. Millions of soldiers return from war zones with PTSD, anger, frustration, fear, and loneliness, much of which surfaces during the darkness of the night. You have the chance to change the lives of these American heroes. Songs and Stories for Soldiers.us provides free MP3 players for these men and women. With a list of 3 million songs in 16 different styles, 100,000 audiobooks, and 30,000 old-time radio programs, every veteran can find something to soothe and comfort them at no cost. All our players contain an 8-hour audio program designed to help veterans fall asleep. With 1,500 plus vets now participating, it's our goal to deliver 10,000 audio players this year. Go to our website at Songs and Stories for Soldiers. Soldiers.us. Help us help a veteran make it through the night. Welcome back, everyone. This is the X Zone. My name is Rob McConnell, and um, over the past 26 years doing this show every night, five nights a week, four guests a night, I've had the pleasure of meeting some very incredible people. And one of my incredible people that I've had the opportunity of meeting and talking to is my guest this hour, Dr. Albert Taylor. And if you'd like to find out about Dr. Taylor, do yourself a favor. Go to www.alberttaylor.com. He is the author of such books as Soul Traveler. Uh, Let me see. The Soul Traveler. No. um, Via Harrow Astral. And, uh, well, these are all your books that are in many languages and all these right. books all these books by dr taylor are are available at one central place and that's amazon.com and I, and one dvd and <laughs> one dvd as i said before albert great having you back with us and um you know you've expanded your your field so much um first of all let's let our listeners know a little bit about you Tell them about your background and some of the government programs that you've been involved with i mean the ones that you can tell us about well, I've always, you know, I mean, uh, I'd, I'd say everything, um, I was, my career was launched by the Air Force. Um, uh, after I got into, when I was in the Air Force, I was a crew chief on the Lockheed U-2, which I had to get a secret clearance. Uh, everyone around there had to get a secret clearance, which, which opened the doors to a lot of Skunk Works programs, where Skunk Works was um, headed by uh, Lockheed, yeah. and a number of programs came out of Skunk Works. So with that experience in the Air Force uh, of Skunk Works, as soon as I got out, I got interviewed, and I, I, I think of it as getting kind of snatched up. I got snatched up by Skunk Works in Burbank, California, which at the time was designing and building the very first uh, stealth fighter before it even had a name. Um, we, it was codenamed Senior, Senior Year or Senior Spear or something like that. So I uh, worked on um, the Stealth Fighter program for a, a while, and then um, all programs in aerospace, they come to an end. And I transferred, I, I went over to the B-1 Bomber program, and I worked on the B-1 Bomber for quite a while. I worked on the flight controls, that was mine, the landing gear system, and the rotary launch uh, cr- uh, cruise missile uh, launcher, mm. which launches tactical nuclear weapons. Um, I worked on the B-1 for a while, and because of, cl- when, when you have a clearance, it just, different classified programs just kind of are presented, and, and it, it was in the heyday of aerospace, I like to think, because I could pick and choose where I wanted to go, what program I wanted to be on. So with the background that I had, I went to um, space programs. I went to Satellite and Electronic Space Division. And I worked on, uh, helped design the GPS, which no one knew what it was at that time. Now everybody uses it. 
but it was for the military at first. And that's when I got into the Strategic Defense Initiative program, um, uh, which was called Star Wars program, an anti-ballistic missile program. So I worked uh, on that um, at um, at that division for a while, and I I started having all these spiritual experiences started multiplying, and I started having a, quite a bit at that time, and it started changing me and changing my attitude, my views on almost everything, uh, and I, I felt that I no longer wanted to work in the Department of, of Defense programs, and I I transferred or I, I left that program and I went to the International Space Station program. And I worked on that uh, in maintainability, which is how to build and maintain the space station in orbit. So I would fly and train astronauts at Johnson Space Center on how to build the space station and how to some of the tools and things like that that they have up there. Um, I've had a lot of uh, input into. I also got assigned the airlock, which they used to leave the space station and do uh, uh, EVA, extravehicular activity walks, spacewalks. The cupola was, was mine also, which is the windowed uh, dome that they view the Earth and, and out in the space from. I was also responsible for the pressurized mating adapter, which the shuttle, when we had the shuttle, would come up and actually mm-hmm. dock with the space station. That was also mine and some My computer goodness. and command and control items inside the space station. What a beautiful career. Wow. But, it was but, fun. It was kid yeah. and candy store, to tell you the truth. <laughs> would, it be, would it be safe to say then, Albert, that what people may regard as UFOs, I'm not saying everything, but some may actually be secret projects that are still under development? It's possible, um, depending on the the configuration and the location in which they see them, because in my experience, they were very careful that the average person didn't just see it flying by. You know, you don't see it flying outside your window. Right. Um, it's, it's very well planned. Uh, usually, um, some of the ones are extreme high altitudes and even space. Um, like the uh, there's a vehicle the Air Force has now that no hardly anyone sees except for a few pictures, but it, it can stay up in space for over a year. Oh so uh, it's possible, and uh, it's possible some of the phenomena, the the secondary things that people see, uh, are caused by classified aircraft, like uh, something that might look like a contrail or stream of a white line and high up in the altitude, uh, strange booms, things like that. That used to happen quite a bit. So it's possible, but it's very rare that someone would actually see these things with their own eyes. When Unless did, they happen to stumble upon them and they're in the wrong place at the right time. That, gotcha. that could happen. So what was it that that sent you on your, your journey into soul searching, soul traveling, uh, remote viewing uh, as a scientist? Well, I never got into remote viewing except for studying it. That okay. wasn't my thing. Um, but I've been having, since I was five years old, uh, personal experiences that I could not understand and I was frightened by as a child. And that would be waking up in the middle of the night feeling paralyzed like I couldn't move. And, I, I mean, uh, it happens to people all over the world. Now, I didn't know that at the time. And in my family, they had a superstition where they say, that um, a witch was sitting on your chest riding you because you were bad that day. That was the explanation for that. So as a child growing up with that, I was scared of it, terrified. My family, be, and it doesn't feel good. Um, it feels uncomfortable. Um, a cu- uh, coupled with that, I would hear my name being called, which is, you know, is, uh, uh, adds to the fear. Or sometimes I would feel like something was touching me. Mm-hmm. Or sometimes I feel like I was sinking down into the bed, like something was pressing on me, pushing me down into the bed. Um, other things that I didn't know were, were associated with it is I would tell my mother, Mom, I wake up in my dreams. And what that meant by that, because I didn't know what lucid dreaming meant yes. at that time, is that I would become aware that I was dreaming and control the dream and change it mm-hmm. and then fly in my dreams. So all of that was kind of disconnected until... Um, later on in life when I became an engineer scientist and I no longer believed in superstition and things like that, but it continued to happen to me. And matter of fact, it began to happen sometimes 
several times a week and, in, and on several occasions three times a night. So it got my attention. And the first thing I did is I went to a doctor and I, cause I thought there was something genetically wrong with me that I could blame on my parents. <laughs> and then I went to a, a neurologist and I went to a psychologist because I was hearing somebody call me yeah. and I got a, you know, and I was working on some, I was actually training astronauts and, and going to the Johnson space station, I mean, space uh, center and, and working in classified programs. There was no way I could, uh, you tell anybody or, or afford having some type of mental or physical breakdown. Uh, but because it was happening to uh, people in my family, I knew it wasn't just me. And that was what led me to start looking beyond just my own personal affliction. So I decided to keep a diary and write everything down that it was happening to me, uh, even that day and what led up to that. And I had no idea that that was going to become my book. Because when I decided to write the, I wasn't, my intention was not to write a book. It was just to document a phenomenon or, or an illness I thought was happening to me. That's all. I wasn't looking for spirituality. I wasn't looking for my soul or anything like that in any way, shape, or form. I was raised Catholic. I was an altar boy. That's how I grew up, and that's what I accepted is Catholicism. So this was something that totally changed my life. From something that I had no idea um, was the beginning of, of uh, this amazing experience. Explanation: Dr. Albert Taylor is our guest. His website is www.alberttaylor.com. Maybe you can uh, help some of our listeners who may be joining us for the first time tonight, Albert, to differentiate between what an out-of-body experience is and how it difference how it differentiates from a near-death experience. Well, I'm also a member of the International Association of Near-Death Studies. I've been a member for quite a few years now. And I've, I like to say some of my best friends have died and come back to life <laughs> because I know so many people who have had this experience. And a near-death experience, usually uh, you're a passenger. Um, the, there's a trauma uh, or there's surgery uh, that's gone wrong, and the person stops breathing, and they find themselves sometimes floating above the body, listening to the doctors mm -hmm. and nurses talking about them, or in a car crash, they may be uh, outside of the wreckage, looking back at themselves in the wreckage. Um, uh, and then, but over a period of time, that, that's temporary. What happens is usually, and not always, it's about 80%, I think, um, they find themselves drawn into some type of tunnel or dark void where they're moving rapidly and there seems to be some type of light or, or beings at the end of the tunnel. Uh, usually after they exit that, they have experiences with deceased relatives. Um, they may even, prior to that, have what's called a panoramic past life review, where uh, back in the Old West they used to say, oh, my life flashed before me. Well, that's where that came from. Is that that's where when people are on the verge of death or, or their death life is threatened, they have this review of of uh, their life, and but they have it from a different perspective, not from the perspective of themselves, but from the perspective of the person that they interacted with. That means if they hurt that person, they're going to feel exactly the pain that that person felt. So that that after the panoramic past life review and visiting re relatives. Because they call it a near-death experience, they have a choice of whether to come back usually. So most of the time they have a choice. And because of their in enhanced um, awareness, I like to say, where they know more than just what they knew in their physical lives and their bodies, where they understand why they went to Earth mm -hmm. and why it is important for them to go back and why it's important to help uh, certain people, they choose to come back. And when they return back to their physical bodies, they're changed usually physically, mentally, and spiritually. That's a near-death experience. An out-of-body experience is something that happens spontaneous sometimes. It can happen controlled or through meditation, and it's controlled. You choose where to go. Um, you do leave your body uh, uh, a great majority of the time. Like I, I think I'm about 70 to 80 percent. Uh, uh, of the time, and you uh, can fly, you still can have these kind of 
uh, near-death near like experiences by seeing deceased relatives and things like that. But you're not drawn necessarily into a tunnel. You choose where you where you want to go if you can focus on that. And the reason I say that is because when you're in the out of body state, let's think of it of, uh, as uh, maybe the subconscious state. You're not going to be thinking about trivial things like where I, can I fly to Tahiti or go visit, you know, Hawaii. You're not thinking about that. You're thinking at a higher level. So a lot of things that are important to you in the physical body aren't important to you in the out-of-body experience because you're thinking about more uh, Albert, lasting uh, Albert, I hate to do this, my friend, but you and I are out of time for this uh, segment. We'll be back on the other side of this break with Albert Taylor. Don't go away. are our personal gateways into infinite wisdom. Don't miss Shamanic Counselor and Indigenously Trained Dream Decoder Sandra Corcoran's inspiring book, Shamanic Awakening Between the Dark and the Daylight. This remarkable work chronicles Sandra's 35 years of experience with diverse wisdom keepers and her initiations throughout the Americas and across the British Isles, Turkey, Greece, and Egypt. Sandy's knowledge of symbology, psychology, and myth influenced her dream blog and workshops. Sandy offers private tarot readings, international journeys, a meditative CD, as well as her book, Shamanic Awakening, to encourage you as you navigate this earth walk, creating a deeper connection to yourself and all that is. Find this and more at Sandy's website, starwalkervisions.com. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. How would you like to be able to read other people's minds? Well, the next best thing is here. When you know how to read a person's name, you know how the person thinks, feels, and behaves. Each letter in our name holds a key to unlock our true essence. Our name contains both our gifts and challenges in this lifetime. Mnemology science discovers personality secrets hidden in the placement of the letters of our names, including the first and last impression people remember about us. Sharon shows us how to interpret the arrangement of letters as outlined in her book, Know the Name, Know the Person. Sharon Lynn Wyeth created Mnemology Science after 18 years of research and testing her theories and has supported thousands of people around the world in understanding themselves and others better. You'll enjoy Sharon's unique teachings as she shares her system to learn the gifts behind your given birth name. Even if you don't like your birth name, there are jewels in this book. If you're thinking of changing your name, ready to name your child, or wanting to get along better with others, this is the book for you. If you'd like to improve your relationships and change your life for the better, get the book today, Know the Name, Know the Person, or visit www.knowthename.com. That's www.knowthename.com. Hello, I'm Justina Marsh, and with my dad, Pete, we are going to present a new show called Too Good to Be True. Together, we are aiming to discover more truths about this world and beyond. Do you have unanswered questions about the world? Do you ever wonder about aliens, conspiracy theories, or the universe? There are many shows discussing subjects such as pyramids or UFOs, but we want to relay this information based on our own research, including from spiritual means. Hopefully, listeners will be helped with their own beliefs and will appreciate the psychic insights that add to the previous research and information. We both look forward to sharing this insight and beginning this journey with our listeners. Visit xzbn.net for more information about when to listen.
Welcome back, everyone. Dr. Albert Taylor is my special guest, www.albertaylor.com. And uh, Albert is explaining to us the difference between a near-death experience and an out-of-body experience. So, Albert, I'm sorry I had to interrupt you, my friend, uh, for the commercials and the news, but please go ahead. Well, in the out-of-body experience, like I was saying, it's controlled. Um, and someone also asked me, you know, what's the difference between an out-of-body experience and remote viewing? And I like to tell them remote viewing is like watching a football game on television and out-of-body experience is like being the quarterback on the field. You're there. It's all tactile. You, you, you're seeing it from a single-point perspective or, uh, or a, a similar to a single point. So um, it's, it's a very different. Uh, and also people ask me, well, how do you know it's not a dream? And the thing is, is that when you come back to your physical body, uh, not only can you have, um, can, in some cases, can you verify locations that you've never been to, but it is, you're profoundly affected by that. Like, I can't think of any dream I've ever had, and they're, most of them are fleeting, that's affected me profoundly and for years, and that's all I think about. And, and when I do think about it, it's almost like it happened last night. I mean, it, it has that kind of uh, profound uh, effect on you. And in some even um, greater cases, uh, and I've experienced that, is it changes your perspective on life and death and who you are and your purpose here. And so it's, it's a profound thing. And if it is just a dream, it is probably the most incredible welcome dream anybody could ever have. You know, you mentioned INDS, and we've had several people on from INDS. And because near-death experiences are, I, I've never heard of a bad one. And whatever the people I've talked to who have had a near-death experience, they don't fear death anymore. Well, I have heard of a bad one. Uh, there is a book out there, I can't remember the title, where a lady does talk about allegedly going to hell. It's extremely rare, mm -hmm. and the thing about it is that it's in that state, it's really easy to create a false environment, a, a false experience. Fear will totally contaminate a near-death experience and an out-of-body experience because we are really creators deep down inside. That's something we're not aware of in the physical so much, but in that state, we really are creators, and we can create a false environment which can terrify us. Like in the out-of-body experience, you can, if you are afraid and you think that you're going to see uh, a devil, then it's going to be the the reddest uh, uh, devil and, and have the biggest horns you've ever seen, and it's going to scare you. And that's the thing, is in that state, most people, they aren't aware of the heightened emotional uh, res uh, responses that you have to, to the stimulus. So if you're going to feel fear, it's going to be the most intense fear you probably have ever felt, and just this intensity is going to falsely convince you that it's real. So a lot of people say, I had an uh, experience, I was leaving my body, and there were demons at the foot of my bed, and I was terrified. Well, and, and after that, when they came back to their physical bodies, they didn't want to do it again. Well, it's because of that fear and because it was a contaminated experience, that's what caused you to not want to do it. And you're going to bring that fear into it the next time because you're going to be thinking about your past experience. So it's really important to try to suppress that fear. It's probably the biggest hurdle anyone will ever have to overcome when exploring these types of phenomena. But would these fears be embedded in the person based on their religious philosophy that they've studied and adhered to? It can be. It can, you know, it can be religious. It can be Hollywood. It oh, can be yeah. all the, the movies that you've seen over your, your childhood. It could be superstitions like in my life. Of the, uh, uh, you know, any kind of negativity that you can attach to it that says don't do that. I remember I was standing in, in a restaurant uh, uh, one time holding a book uh, on, on spirituality. I can't remember the name of it. And someone just walked, a stranger walked up to me and says, the Bible says don't, don't mess around with that. I mean, so just, you know, that kind of fear yeah. without any fact or connection can, can go into that experience and, and turn out to be negative. So you can have a negative experience in the n near death and out of body, but 99%, and if you continue to have not a near death experience, but an out of body experience, 
is that eventually it all turns positive and all that fearful uh, things that you brought with it drops away. All right, we've talked about near-death experiences. We've talked about out-of-body experiences. Where does remote viewing come in? And what is remote viewing? Well, remote viewing, this is the thing is, um, imagine, let's just, let's, you know, for people in, in almost all religions, they talk about some type of soul or, or uh, consciousness right. that survives the death, the death of the body. Well, that soul, that consciousness has multiple talents multiple talents. We haven't even began to, to experience them. Mm -hmm. One of them is premonitions. One of them is leaving the body. One of them is, is uh, I think it's called uh, sentient. Or, uh, when you touch something, you get uh, uh, feelings. Uh, remote viewing is another talent of the soul. You can, I mean, uh, you can evolve and almost anybody can do it if you suspend certain fears and things like that and remote view because it's a talent of the soul. Um, we don't have, you know, that's the thing. We really, because we're locked into our five senses from birth, we really think that our five senses are sharing with us everything that we need to know about our environment, mm -hmm. which is not true. Uh, right now, where you're sitting and where I'm sitting, I know for a fact that there's radio waves bouncing and going through my walls and exiting all yep. over the place, but my five senses can't detect them. So I know there's something my five senses can't do. Well, that's the same with remote viewing. It, you're capable of detecting things that you didn't know you could do before, and the soul can actually project out and view uh, locations and people that are not physically close to them. Some people, uh, the military used to, I read about this, the military used to do experiments in remote viewing mm -hmm. to gain uh, classified information. Yeah. That, like I said, that's hard to do over an extended period of time because what I've found, and, and a lot of other people, is everything starts funneling and heading towards spiritual awareness. You can play, I mean, I used to have so much more uh, trivial experiences that, and when I first began this, flying around doing things that really didn't, and were just fun, but over a period of time, it lost its um, interest, and I started focusing in more on the spiritual aspect of things because it had a deeper uh, meaning and deeper effect on me and removed some of the, the fears that I had in everyday life. So you can, you can do that initially, but over a period of time, it becomes a, a, a talent of the soul, and your focus starts leaning in that direction. I understand that in, time, in remote viewing, you can actually go forward and backward in time based on our concept of time. So does this mean mm -hmm. that if, if, if remote viewing is, is, you know, another aspect of what the soul can do, that time travel is basically soul's time, I'm sorry, remote viewing can be classified as time traveling of the soul? Well, we're still trying to figure out what is time, if you think about this. And we already, you know, we've seen movies that talk about time is warped uh, yeah. around black holes. And, we, and that's a fact. I mean, that's a theory, but um, we, we're pretty sure that that actually happens. Uh, when you're on Earth, where you are right now, the time is different from where you are to where the GPS satellites are. Mm -hmm. They have to correct that with electronics. So time is not exactly fixed like we think it is. And a matter of fact, what is it really based on? The, the sun travels around the, I mean, the earth travels around the sun, it takes 365 days. But what about other suns and other solar systems and things like that? Does, is that the same time that we have, or is that a different time? What about different speeds? So when you take the soul, which is totally independent of any of those elements, and, and, and it just exists, then that means it's capable of, realizing future time, current time, and past time, because it's all the same thing. To it, it really almost, it's a, it's, it's a view. It's, a, it's an awareness. It's not a, an elapsed experience like we have, like we experience it here on Earth. So t uh, the remote viewing is capable of looking forward, back, and here, presently, and, and, and out-of-body experiences are capable of moving forward, back, and having experiences here. But... I do. I don't really give a lot of warnings, and I really don't give any. But that's one of the few things I, I say. I 
try to express to mm-hmm. people to exercise caution because in my own personal experience, I, I was experimenting and I viewed some things that were yet to happen and and cuz i was documenting this and trying to figure it out but it wasn't yet to happen around the world or in another country or in another state it was yet to happen in my own personal life and not all of it was good and i thought okay well the future is not uh, etched in time i can change some of these things but that's not how it happened because some of these things had to happen to affect other people's lives and experiences so it wasn't all about me we're just one little spoke in the big big wheel so some of these things will may happen, and if you view them, be it be them positive or negative, you may still have to live through them and experience them. So I caution that. You know, there there are people like Nostradamus who predict the future. Would they be using a, a based on what we know about them? Would we could it be said that they were doing astral travel, soul travel? Or remote viewing in order uh, to get the predictions? Probably in remote viewing or, or some type of premonition. Mm-hmm. Um, you can, it can happen in so many ways. You know, we think of, of it as switching on, I, I'm turning on this remote viewing switch. I'm turning on the, this clairvoyant switch. It's not really like that. It can fl- it's like a wave. It can come and go with, with the tide. And, like, I had a person, a friend of mine, who had experience where he had never had any type of uh, uh, paranormal uh, or clairvoyant experience, mm-hmm. and he was just sitting in his chair in the living room, had just gotten uh, divorced, and had just gotten fired, and was oh such in God. a mental state that he decided to just close his eyes for a moment and try to relax, and the next thing he knew, pow, he was above his body, looking down at his body, and he got this wave of what he was supposed to do for his immediate future, and after he returned to his body, he ended up it, it really uh, was amazing. He ended up going to school. He ended up getting a, a, a degree in electronics, and now he works in computer science. So things like that can happen to people uh, out of the clear blue sky. It doesn't. There's you know it does, it can it can be practiced through meditation, or sometimes it can hit you like a lightning bolt when you never had experience before. Albert, you and I have to take our final break. Please stand by. Exonation, Dr. Albert Taylor is our guest this hour. And uh, Dr. Taylor is a best-selling author and former aeronautical engineer scientist on the International Space Station. And uh, Dr. Taylor spent two and a half decades evaluating system designs on a wide variety of top-secret government programs, such as the F-117A Stealth Fighter and the Strategic Defense Initiative, anti-ballistic missile program, also known as Star Wars. What a man, what a career, and you know what? Now he's channeling, if you'll excuse the pun, all his energy, all his scientific knowledge into investigating and researching the paranormal and everything we talk about here in the X-Zone. We'll be back as we close this segment of the X-Zone with Dr. Albert Taylor on the other side of this break. Once again, his website is www.alberttaylor.com. Hi everyone, Rob McConnell here, and I wanted to spend a moment on internet streaming. Everybody has heard about internet streaming, but not many know much about it. Did you know the internet streams just about everything? Movies. From new releases to old classics. TV shows. Almost every show, every episode, and much more. But the question has always been, how do you do it? Well now, thanks to the folks at 123 Ready TV, I have the answer for you. They have developed a simple program app, 123 Ready TV, that you install on your Windows PC, Android smartphone, or Android tablet that can have you streaming like a pro in less than five minutes. You truly won't believe how much is available or how easy it is to do until you try. And for a one-time cost of only $19.99, this product is a real winner. To learn more about 123 Ready TV, visit our website at www.xzbn.net. 
This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. True healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A soul balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world. There's a legend shared by many indigenous cultures of a time when the nations were cast to the four corners of the world. Each nation was given a body of sacred knowledge that held a different portion of the truth to preserve. True reality could not be known until all the nations reunited, combining the information. If a single one was missing, the world could not be reborn and darkness would prevail. The Science of Magic Radio is dedicated to reuniting the sacred knowledge. With the understanding, none of us has all the answers, but together we can open new perceptions and possibilities. Through our combined vision, the world can be reborn into a place where darkness no longer prevails. Join me, Gwilda Wiecka, and the Science of Magic daily on the Exxon Broadcast Network, xzbn.net, or visit us at thescienceofmagic.net. Exonation, uh, Dr. Albert Taylor is our special guest. He is the author of Soul Traveler, and he's uh, working on his latest book, Journey of the Cosmic Soul, and that's a detailed scientific and spiritual study resulting from over 20 years of out-of-the-body, paranormal, and astrophysical research. Albert, um, were there any significant situations or discoveries you uncovered while performing paranormal research using ro- robotic probes? Oh, um, I think, you know, this is a real uh, strange experience for me because I have to, I like to say, I have to keep a paranormal poker face yeah. during these investigations. And But inside my head, I may be doing flips and going, oh, my God, I can't <laughs> believe this is really, really happening. But for the, because we, we actually, you know, people um, ask us to help them, mm-hmm. I, you know, we have to be professional. Well, um, I never expected that I would encounter the things that I encountered. I, I mean, I, we all want to see certain paranormal things. I mean, I want to see a full-form apparition and things like that, but I never expected that I would actually be able to film and audio record paranormal phenomenon. So, yes, there has been 
some amazing things that I never ever believed I would see. And, and one of them was um, I got we got called for an investigation at a a home in uh, Palmdale, California, and the lady said that her 13 year old daughter was being attacked by something. Uh, so the first thing I did is I have, I have a team that fluctuates from anywhere from 12 to 40 individuals, and I had one of the female uh, investigators follow the little girl around with the mother's permission everywhere she went because we just I don't know if the little girl is trying to get attention from the family and is, and is doing this herself. We, you just you don't know when you go into these situations. But what happened was, all of a sudden, the female investigator screamed to me to come in. I was interviewing the mother and to come into the bedroom. And I ran into the bedroom with the camera, and the, the girl was pointing at a, a clear part of her skin, which I would, would love to share pictures with you later of that, where she was showing it's burning. And there was nothing there on her skin that I saw. And she said, it's burning, it's burning, it's scratching me. And right before my eyes and on film, slowly but surely, these three like uh, three claw like scratches marks began to redden and then swell and then actually began to bleed and during that experience by the time we were done it was at whatever it was which i didn't see anything around me because i didn't have the equipment except for an uh, electronic field meter which was going off by the way whatever it was started scratching symbols into the girl's body it wasn't just random scratches anymore. It scratched the symbol in her side and the inverse of that same symbol on her thigh. So, oh, my gosh. Uh, it was probably, yeah, and this I was watching all this with my eye. I kept pulling the camera away and looking with my, my real eyes, and then I put the camera back up, and I couldn't believe that this was actually transpiring right in front of us. So, yes, I have seen and witnessed and recorded some amazing things that I probably years ago would have never I believe existed. Why is it that there are people who can have these paranormal experiences and there are other people who can be standing right in the same room where other people are having paranormal experiences and see nothing or hear nothing or feel nothing? Well, I kind of like to think of um, us as a radio. And like I said, those radio waves are bouncing all around us all the time. So there's, I don't believe in there's a portal and they come and go and they're sometimes here mm -hmm. and they're sometimes there. They, they're everywhere. And, but the radio it has many stations and each one of us is tuned to a different station. Some of us are on the same station. And the ones that are on the same station of these things, these occurrences, is, are the ones that are going to pick this up more than anybody else in the room. It doesn't mean that you can't eventually change the other radios to tune into that frequency also, but if they're just set that way, they're going to be oblivious and you're not going to hear anything. So that's how we are. Some of us mm -hmm. are tuned into a certain frequency of this, this particular phenomena or phenomena, uh, and some of us aren't. And uh, I think that may be uh, a big, there may be a bigger uh, reason for that because some of these experiences that we encounter personally are life-changing. Not everybody needs to have a life-changing experience based on the paranormal. I personally, obviously, I think that's what was supposed to happen to me, but it wasn't supposed to happen to my aunt or to my cousin or to someone right. else that uh, I meet at the donut store. So that's kind of how my explanation and acceptance of, of what's going on. Albert, we've got about six minutes left, and I'd like to ask you this question because... Um I am very interested in your answer. Why did you become profoundly disappointed in the present worldwide paranormal community? Well, because, you know, um, I, I have been an a enthusiast for a long time. Even though I watched the shows when I was a little kid. I've been interested in this for a long time. But as I began to actually conduct investigations, what I realized, and I would turn, come home and watch other shows or, or review other uh, people's investigative research, and I found, and it was the same old thing. It was, you know, it was EVPs uh, that some of them didn't make any sense. Uh, uh, there was a little girl who needs to go into the light. We weren't learning anything. 
that, you know, I wanted to learn more. I wanted to find out what is the connection. If, we're, if we are these things, these souls, and we could possibly end up haunting someplace, let's say, how does that even happen? Why does it happen? And uh, from everything that I was seeing and researching and looking for in the paranormal community, they weren't doing that. They were satisfied with going around in circles, talking about the same old thing. So that's when I decided that it, it wasn't about um, show and tell. It wasn't about uh, a television show. It was about data, research, and education. That's what I decided. And that's why I decided to create my own paranormal research investigative group, mm -hmm. PRI. And that's what we dedicate our mission to is paranormal research through science. Wow. The, uh, some of the, you know, I've, I've watched a bit of a few of the paranormal shows out there, and they disgust me. They really do. It's and I, disappointing. Yeah, it disappointing. is. Disappointing. And, and it gives the paranormal community a bad name, a lot of it. It sure does. And it's hard enough. It's really hard enough as it is without being, you know, being made a fool of when you're talking about something this esoteric. So. That is so true. Albert, what are your final thoughts for the members of the Exxon Nation listening tonight? Because we're going to have to get you back on the show. I, in fact, I've told you during the break we're going to get to our segment producer to get a hold of you because we still have so much to talk about. But what are your final thoughts for tonight to I, the members of the I think Exxon? all of this is about fear. And it's fear of living, fear of, of relationships, fear of taking chances, fear of the unknown. I think all of this is about overcoming that fear. And that's what uh, um, I'm dedicated to doing. Even fear of death. And, and if we can open uh, uh, um, a, a pathway to looking beyond the, the doorway of death and seeing that we don't die, then it's really about life. And it's really about the journey. And it's about why did we come here in the first place. So I think that we should stop uh, looking for the end and what's the end result and the goal and really uh, pay attention to the journey and what we, this thing we call life and each other so and love. Love is the big one. Love is truly the big ones. So looking back on what we've talked about today, what does astrobio astrophysics, out-of-body experiences, the paranormal, and evolution collectively have in common? Oh, man. And we have, what, two seconds to answer? <laughs> uh, we've got about two and a half minutes. <laughs> Um, you know, the, the Earth is 4.5 uh, billion years old, uh, maybe 4.3. Um, if we existed before that, um, then we're, we're timeless. And it's not about this little time period here. Um, it's about what is the universe, and we are part of it. I mean, there's elements in your body that came not from this planet or even our sun. Our, our sun is our step-parent. Our, the molecules in your body came from another sun that went supernova millions and millions of years, billions and billions of years ago. So that's what the connection is. It's not just this time period that of, of us experience life on Earth now. It's, if we've existed beyond the physical body, then we've spent an e eons being here in this universe. And if we are here in this universe and are made of this universe, then why are we here in this universe? And that's what my research starts talking about is not just Earth time, not just our sun time, but universe time. As always, Albert, time flies when you're with us. I, I want to commend you on the great work and the contributions that you have made not only to the space industry, not only to the defense industry, not only to the New Age um, awakening, not only to the world of the paranormal, but to humanity. And I thank you, and it's always a great pleasure talking to you and, and hearing from a legend in his own time, you, Albert Taylor. Oh, man. <laughs> you know, I, I, all I can say is thank you. I, um, this feeds my soul. This is what I, I, I came here to do, and it, it makes all the difference in the world that someone can listen to me and find out something about themselves and then go off and explore their own lives. So thank you for this opportunity. I really appreciate it. Albert, we're going to have you back on in the very near future. So until then, take care of yourself. And once again, thank you for everything that you do. My pleasure. Thank you. Take care, my good friend. Exonation. Oh, 
Albert Taylor, Dr. Albert Taylor, has been my guest this hour. His website is www.alberttaylor.com. I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news at six and a half minutes past the top of the hour as we continue here in the X Zone from our broadcast center, where? In Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, right on the shores of Lake Ontario, between Toronto and Niagara Falls, Ontario, slash over the bridge, New York. Don't go away.